It takes a big bait to catch a big fish. And that's why in today's video, we're fishing with giant live bait for monster fish. Two months ago, we met this stranger while pond fishing and he told us about this hidden pond that has some double digit bass in it. But we weren't able to land any of those double digit bass. So one month later, we went back to only catch some big mud fish. But that just wasn't enough. We wanted to catch an absolute lake monster. And that's why we're live bait fishing today at a new location in hopes that we can catch the monster we've been waiting for. But the first step to this process is to catch some giant live bait. Fletcher is gonna be attempting to catch some live bait with a cast net, while your boy Noah is gonna to stick to a more traditional method with just a rod and a reel. Now let's hop into it. All right, boys, we're ready to get this started. We're doing something a little bit different than Fletcher today. We're gonna to be sticking to what we know, using a rod and gonna to try to catch as much bait as we can. Fletcher is actually at another spot and he's going to be trying to catch some different live bait. So we're gonna go ahead and get started, get our poles rigged up, and then I'm gonna go through everything and show you guys exactly how we're about to catch these fish. All right, guys, it is time to get started with the cast net. We gotta catch some live bait here and I think there's no better way to do that efficiently than a cast net. If we can find some fish up on the bank, try not to get it snagged in every single treble hook in the back of this first, that would be a good way to start. All right, boys, we're gonna set up camp right here. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly what items we got. So for rods today, we got a Kickin' Their Bass TVX Loose Combo. If you guys wanna check them out, kickintheirbass.com, it'll be linked down below. And then I also have a mock smash with me as well. If you guys wanna check out any of the mock combos, you can check them out on mock. Before we get deeper into this video, only 27% of you all watching these videos are actually subscribed. So if you could take the time, hit the subscribe button, it really helps the channel. I'd appreciate it. We got this green live bait bucket right here, which we're gonna be putting all of our bluegill in. We got some green night crawlers. That is gonna be our bait of choice for today. And then we also have this tackle box. So pretty much inside, we got anything and everything you can think of. We got all different size hooks. We have some bluegill hooks there. We have some bigger hooks for some catfish. Um, some really big hooks there. I don't even know what we'd be using those for. Got some regular sinker weights, some split shots, and obviously a bunch of different types of bobbers. So we have everything that we would need. But first things first, let's go ahead and rig up these rods and get them ready for the bluegill. There we go. We got what we came for. So this is actually brackish water. So hopefully once we actually put them in the fresh water, they don't just get like shocked from like the, sol uh, what is it? Like sal how you say? salinity, something like that for the salt content. I was always bad at English. There was a few things I was good in at school at and English was not one of them. Well, that's okay. We make fishing videos for a living now. So I don't think I needed it. So we already have a bobber on here. Um, overly sized bobber. We got a tiny little panfish hook. I'm gonna kind of downsize this bobber, so I'm actually gonna take it off and put one of these smaller ones on. Gonna open up our tackle box here. We're just gonna get a bobber like that. Pretty clean and basic, nothing big. That's really all we need for bluegill. This really varies too. It really depends on the day, I'm gonna tell you, because there's some days I'll only put the bobber about eight inches up that line. There's some days I'll have it you know, about a foot and a half, but we're just gonna put it about a foot up the line. I think that's gonna be our hot zone. Go ahead and strap this bobber on here. Boom, simple as that. And there we go, we got a simple bluegill rig. One other thing that we can do to make this even better, just gonna grab us one of these small split shots. We're just gonna put this about halfway up the line between the hook and the bobber. Pretty simple. And that is all we need to catch some bluegill. So now our old green worms, never have used these before. So let's, let's take a look and just see what these worms look like. Oh boy, look at that. That is spicy right there. A little bit of green action. That's definitely dye. That's not something that's natural, um, but they do look pretty cool. Maybe the fish think they're pretty cool too. So let's go ahead and get one of these out. I just kind of thread them up on the hook. Boom, just like that. I've seen a lot of you guys comment too that you actually thread it up there, just kind of like how you would thread a worm, like an artificial worm on. But that's usually what I do. I'll put it through a couple times so it doesn't come off. And uh, that's just what I've had the best luck on. I'm gonna try to go out on the dock first and see if I can't cast over this railing. There's usually some bait and things swimming around here. All right. Let's get this thing in here. Oh, we got something. We got something. What do we got? 
I don't think we're gonna be using largemouth bass today. <laughs> we got we got like a, a pound and a half largemouth. That's um it's one way to start. <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't see him sitting there. It's pretty shallow. Just a cute little guy. We'll get him right back in there and try to actually find us something that we can use. Thanks, buddy. I'm just gonna drop this bobber right off this ramp. Pretty basic here. Uh-oh, looks like I got a bass coming up to it. Oh, yeah, that's a bass. He is like ultra smart. He's just swimming all around the worm. I can see him in my glasses. We don't even need a dang bass. Maybe we throw this over here in this corner some more. Let's see. Right up there. I've had a lot of luck in the past right up on that little boat ramp. This might be proved to be a little bit more difficult than I thought. We'll try this other side. I have caught fish in here, so we'll see if we get any in the cash net. I feel like the closer we get to the bank, the better chance we're gonna have. Oh, we got one, nice. Oh, that's perfect size too. That's exactly what we needed. Boom, bada bing. Is that a, is that a bluegill? Oh yeah, that's a little blue. I'm glad we kind of got like two different strategies going here because I feel like I might have a harder time catching some of like the really big live bait. Noah will probably have a better chance with the worms and like actually trying to catch them on a rod and reel than I will. Those fish tend to be a little bit more skittish and just a little bit harder to catch with a cast net, but we should be able to scoop up a bunch of fish this size. We're gonna put out some big bait as well in hopes of catching a giant. As far as just quantity is concerned, these guys are the perfect thing for the job. Every once in a while, it's pretty good to sit back, relax, you know, drip, drink some coffee, <laughs> you know? and just kind of chill out. Don't get me wrong, it's fun here and there. I'm more of a guy that likes to move, move, move and cast a ton though, for sure. Here it goes nothing. Try to get a little bit more distance on that. Ugh, Ugh nothing, man. Um, all right, let's keep on moving and try to work down this bank line where we can slip in here where there isn't too much brush and stuff. Somehow I always get stuck with the, the cast netting duty when we film live bait videos for Noah. The man never wants to get his hands dirty, I swear. I've never seen smoother hands by a male species, moisturized and everything. I'm gonna tell you right now, you would not think that this is hard to catch a bluegill on a bobber, but I have not seen anything. And usually there's a lot of fish here. I have a lot of confidence in Fletcher right now, catching a lot of bait on a cast net. But at the same time, I need at least a couple fish, at least three bluegill, good sized ones that we can use. Oh, finally, we got another one. Yeah, we got two, nice. They're stuck in the net a little bit. There goes one and two. These are a little bit smaller. These are definitely usable by all means. I think this is also a good size for live bait. Come on, fishy. Oh, yes, sir, fishy. We are on board and it is a bass. <laughs> we would catch a bass when we're trying to catch bluegill. Okay, Bubba, calm down. Calm down, shouty. That is by far, boys, my PB bass. I think that's the biggest one I've ever caught. <laughs> you guys see what I'm doing here? Look at look at this though. Look how fat that fish is. Absolute toad. That is not what we want to catch. I have asked this in a few other episodes, and I don't know how you guys feel about it. I'm just a bass lover, so it'd be very hard for me to do this. But at the same time, I'm curious. Should we go live bait fishing with bass for bass? Comment down below. Let me let me know your feedback. I love bass, I would feel very bad, but at the same time, I'm very curious. Well, there he goes. I mean, would a big bass eat a bass? I think he would. Fish are crazy. That was a great textbook. Oh, we got something. We got something, it looks different. Is that a shad? Is that an American shad? I believe it is. Look at that. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever caught a shadow with a cast net before. Let's go ahead and stick that thing in here. We're gonna be careful with this guy. This is, I feel like, premium bait. I feel like the vast majority of bass fishing lures are designed to look just like this guy and just about that size. So 
if they'll eat artificial stuff that looks like that, surely they'll eat a live one. Ooh, look at you. <laughs> what is going on? Okay, boy. That is the longest worm. Let's get him on the hook. I actually got a little more. So, so this is what I was saying the first time. A lot of people have told me this is how they rig their worm up. They'll like sit here, okay? They put their worm up on the hook and they'll almost thread it on like a... <laughs> like an actual artificial bait like that which that's an option and then i can kind of do this like i can kind of double it over boom give them the hook a little bit more because at the end of the day if we're catching bluegill i don't want too big of a clump but that right there should get a bite watch us get the mother load you just fill this thing up oh let's go not the mother load but we got another shad and a bluegill and another or shad let's go all right guys we got that five star bait today boys you know what happened last time when i got a bite i started singing to him fishy fishy i gotta i gotta think of the lyrics first boys i'm not no singer but hopefully noah's delivering over there with some some quality size because i got i got the candy look at those little floppy boys here you go guys enjoy your new home fishy fishy don't be wishy washy we did pull up the shell earlier. Do we have any critters in here? Ooh, we got a little, little, some kind of crab. I don't know, is he alive? Oh yeah, he's kicking. We'll put, we'll put him in there. <laughs> I don't know what will eat him in freshwater, but you know, we can always try. Put him on a little baby hook. Well, you know, you can keep your shell too. <laughs> Come on, big bluegill. Just slurp on the worm, eh? Today. My singing today is definitely not on point and that might cost us from getting bites, I'm not gonna lie. Oh yeah, that's gonna be it, boys. That is all we need. Three more little shads and we probably have the best bait we've ever had for live bait fishing. I don't know how the, the catfish are gonna respond to these guys, but surely, the largemouth are just gonna have a field day with them. And I don't know about y'all, but I'd rather catch a giant largemouth than a big catfish. I think I'm gonna take a little route across the street. There's actually another pond that connects to this one. And we're gonna see if we can get better bites over there because over here it's just dead, man. I don't know if it's my worms or the fish aren't biting, but I'm kind of worried because Fletcher is probably gonna carry the job on the live bait. But uh, let's go ahead and head over there and see if it's any different than this spot. Hold on, hold on, what is that? What is that? We got him. I think we got him, dude. Unless the net got messed up. No! That landed right on top of that fish. It's getting worse by the, the second here. Oh, we got something big. Oh, let's go. I think we got one of those horse models I was talking about. This is honestly a small one compared to some of the other ones in here. But these things, actually eat grass like a carp and vegetation and they're really really hyper all right calm down relax honey all right here we go that is a mullet and this thing is like perfect bait for like a big tarpon this is something that you like to throw for that um i don't know what else would eat something this size in this pond besides a giant tarpon maybe a huge catfish to be completely honest we have absolutely no use for this fish right now with what we have so we're just gonna let him go on his way but uh we appreciate getting a chance to check you out up close and personal there you go go eat some grass all right guys on that note i think it's time to go check the rod see what noah's up to and see if we have any big fish over at the dock boys i do not know what is going on these fish are not one to bite we we're just trying our best and i just haven't seen a fish like i haven't seen anything at all like i got polarized glasses on right now if there were fish up here i should be able to see them technically but there's really nothing this is pretty crazy i don't see no one on the dock oh there he is he's out there to the left trying to catch a fish on that little pipe <coughs> what's up greetings how, how's the uh, the bite? Totally smoked him. We got zero bluegill. Oh my God. <laughs> we got zero. Got but hold on, hold on, hold on. To make it even better, I caught a bass. Okay. okay. 
He got something. That's not gonna help us, but I mean, yeah, I didn't keep him. Hey, at least I'm doing the heavy lifting over here. Come check out what I got. What do you got, dude? Dude, we we um, got a plethora what? of stuff. Oh my gosh! Um, what a, is that a shad? Yeah. Bro, um, it looks like he's doing. He's going a little, having a hard time. All of them have had a hard time, haven't they? Yeah, that sucks, dude. Um, we caught some shad. Uh, it looks like they might now be cut bait. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm thinking. So we're gonna go to a whole different location, Fletcher, to catch whatever big fish with the big live bait. All right. So I think what we do is we go over there, we start some cut bait, we set out some rigs, maybe even some live bait, and then we can still attempt to catch some of the bluegill on the rod. What All do you right. think about that? You think yeah, that's a good no, game that plan? Sounds good. I mean, you got enough bait for us to start. So let's go ahead and get out to our next spot and see if we can go catch some really big fish and also some even bigger live bait. We have arrived. Yes, sir. Okay, let's get this stuff out of the golf cart and down to the dock. All right, you got the rods. Do you want your net? Yeah, we'll take the net too. I caught me a wild flusher. <laughs> it's my pee -pee. Yeah, No, we're good with it ever now. <laughs> Not the butterfly net? Come on now, no? All right, this is a heavy mess. You got her? We should, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Down, boy. Where about it? Money, money, money. We ready to catch fat, big, juicy mama. <laughs> big got, juicy. You got it there, man? I'm trying not to spill the water, you know? <laughs> All right, boys. So first step to this process, we want a big bluegill. That's the purpose of this video is giant live bait. So we need, we, we have some other options, but we need a big bluegill first. I feel way better about the big fish, but to catch a big fish, we need a giant bait, right? Yes, sir. Well, what's like the ideal depth for bluegill? So I just run it about a foot, foot and a half above the hook. I'm gonna flick up here against the wall. Just up. That wasn't a great, oh, okay, that's gonna work. I think that's gonna get the job done. Put that down. Guys, I got one ticking me. Oh, I got, got one ticking me. Yes, look, he's oh, running with it. Oh, there we go, oh, baby. There we go, bluegill? baby. Yes, it is. Oh, nice. That is a big bluegill too. Look at that, boys. That is exactly what we need. We came to this marina side and uh, I have a feeling that there's a lot better fish in this location. So we got one big bluegill yes, to sir. work with here. That's yes, a freaking sir. massive one too, man. Did look you just get him right on the end of the dock. Side. Right on the end. He was probably right under that little float. And uh, that is our first big bluegill. Yeah, that happened quick. He's a little beat up, man. With his tail and everything. Pretty fish though. Thank you, sir. Hopefully he enjoys his new home for the, moon, his for little, the meantime. His little bucket home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys, so our game plan is pretty much to get that big bluegill that we just caught. Go ahead and get him rigged up on a bobber. We're gonna cast him out there, kind of let him roam around and get comfortable and uh, wait for a big bass to bite him. And while he's out there swimming around, me and Fletcher are gonna get some of these other rods rigged up. We have some cut bait. We also have some really stinky catfish bait over by the golf cart that we can go pick up here in a second. And uh, I think we're gonna end up catching a lot of big fish. But first things first, let's go ahead and rig that big bluegill up and let them swim around. I'm thinking one of these big circle hooks should be the perfect tool for the job. All right, boys, I had to come back here. I wanna get a few things first. We're gonna get these pliers. We also have a really big pair of pliers. We're gonna grab those as well, just in case one of the big catfish get it down in his mouth. And we also have some of this stinky catfish bait. We have another one here that's also supposedly vanilla flavored. Listen, I'm not gonna try this on camera. I do not wanna eat vanilla flavored catfish bait. But yeah, that's some other supplies that we got that we're gonna bring out to play around with. There we go. That should be good. I'll let Noah decide what he wants, but we're probably about a, a foot and a half right there. Now just to get in here to the bucket and actually get this guy rigged up. And there's a few ways you can do this. I'm not sure which way I want to go about it yet, but let's just get him out of the out of the little bucket right there. All right, guys. So we're trying to figure out exactly where to hook this. So this is a perfect question for y'all. We're going to try our best today. But where would you guys hook this bluegill if you were to hook it? Where I like to hook it is right there behind the fin. There's a line right here that you don't want to hit. You can kind of see it on the bluegill. Um, so Fletcher, probably right, somewhere right there behind the fin. I would go a little more in because you don't want him to come off. Yeah, I think that yeah. should be a good spot. Good tender spot. 
tough spot, not even tender. Oh, he's in there now. Okay. But let's go ahead and give her a cast. Now I'm gonna let you, you let me you do, do the, honors? the honors here. Okay. Wherever you want to put them. I gotta be careful. Where do you think? Are you thinking they're just way out here? I don't know, man. I, I feel like you gotta put them next to the dock somewhere. Maybe this way, dude. Like kind of towards that boat. He'll still have room to run to the right if he wants to. Maybe put him like right between these two docks, kind of in the middle. Okay, this rod is so flimsy, bro. Give it a sling. There we go. Money. <laughs> That's money. Is. Look at him take it off. Oh. I think I just had something on here, guys. My bobber got pulled like way underneath the dock and a lot of my worm just got ate. I'm going to actually let him run free, so I'm going to leave my bell open. I'm actually just going to stick the rod around this cleat right here just so it doesn't take off but yeah we'll give them some line to move around maybe we'll get a really big bass on that something take your bait yeah something i was like my bobber was just gone it was like all the way up underneath the dock was it really yeah we're gonna put it back half like 80 percent of my worm is gone too put just like a little little feeler out there all right fletcher i'll be right back i gotta grab our fillet knife we need this fillet knife for some of the cut bait that we're about to do since we got the bluegill out there all right, Fletch. What you thinking? Got the knifey. Got the knife. Okay, now we just gotta pick which bluegill or bait in particular. I know you got a bunch of different things in there. We're gonna do him through the nostril. Fish actually try to eat other fish head first, so they go down their throats without the fins like popping back up and getting caught. So I think that should do the trick. Go ahead and get the bobber on this. There we go. Right there in that shade line. That thing looks good, bro. That thing swam off really good. She's still kicking great. All right. All right, so we got our worm. We got our big bluegill. We got our shad. We got a variety. All right, I guess I'm the, the grim reaper today. Sorry, boys. Looks like it's your bad day. Well, Jimmy, you gotta do it, pretty hard. it was nice knowing you, pal. And rig it up here this is like i said not the best piece in my opinion but it's something to start off with i'm gonna actually toss this one right here in this corner i think it's a great spot for a big cat to be sitting so toss that bluegill head cut bait right in that corner that i think that's going to be a good spot so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to reel up ever so slightly so my line doesn't have a ton of slack i don't think i've ever fished with cut bait shad i'm pretty sure this should go pretty good here. Nice, nice and juicy. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. Oh yeah, Fletcher, that's oh, it. Oh yeah, that's what they like. Yo, the you catfish gonna eat yeah. that boy. Where do you think we should put this, Noah? Maybe other dock or all right here? You could go to that dock, and then you know if we're not having any luck here, we can always run to that side. Okay, I might go put them straight across in that hole. So let's pop right here. We're gonna throw this right in the corner. Uh, you know, let me just free line it down here really quick. I think that is gonna produce us a big old kitty. So it's been a few minutes, guys, and we haven't had any luck yet. Our fish are still swimming around well. Our shad has been moving all over the place. Our bluegill has kind of moved back into this corner and I'm thinking it's time that we just go ahead and pick up this worm. It seems like the fish aren't ultra interested in it and we don't really need a bluegill until we lose the big one. What I wanna do is actually use some of this, like, I don't, I guess not artificial, but manufactured catfish bait and toss that somewhere around here and see what kind of results that can deliver for us. I mean, I feel like it's hard to beat the real deal, but hey, you never know if you don't try. Keep my face away from this. This stuff smells so bad. All right, <laughs> oh God. I don't really know the proper way to hook this stuff up if I'm being honest, guys. Uh, maybe you just like ball it up and stick it on this thing. I could be totally wrong. Let me, let me know down in the comments below if this is how you fish with this. This should be a good spot. Time to let that thing soak. Looks like we're on the bottom. That should be good. Let's leave that bale open. Hmm. 
Yo. Something's yep. taking off? Oh yeah, yeah, something's definitely got that, I think. Oh, dude, he's running, dude. Oh my gosh, yeah. Did you take it? Dude, I don't feel nothing, but this bait was right there. Well, that's our first bite of the day, guys. So I'll set that back down there. Maybe he'll pick it back up. That line, see how it's tangled? Yeah, I just looked over and I happened to see it straight out. And I'm like, hold on, there's something going on. Oh, it's oh, taking it, it's taking it, it's taking it. Oh, dude, he's taking all Fletch. He's taking all Fletch. He's back. He's back. Do you want it or do you, you want me you, to get you it? You go for it, bro. This is you. Well, I'm going to let him eat for a second. I'm going to let him eat for a second. Dude, that fish was taking off. So just remember too, we don't have we don't have regular circle hooks, like just like the octopus ones, you know. So you might need to give it a little more. Yeah, that sucks. I just I hate to see it, see him just get away like that twice. So at least you know the shad works, and we got bit like. I mean, like, that was quick. I would just quick. drop it back down. You might get hit again. Maybe we should change the hook location. I'm gonna try changing the hook location. Okay. I think mine's getting hit. You have one? I don't know. Uh, there's a dragonfly hitting your line. I was like, it's it's bouncing. I was like, what's it bouncing for? Oh. You get stripped? I guess he ate whatever I had. All right, boys, what we're gonna do in the time being, I had a fish eat that. We're just gonna get the other piece of the shad. My Fletcher cut up since he got that bite on the shad, two bites really. I'll just rig this up. There's something else down there. I might actually move it over here by Fletcher because that was two quick bites. Let's go ahead and put that in there like that. Just moving the hook location. Maybe have some luck with a better hookup ratio there. I'm just not really sure. Not my not my specialty. Probably put mine over here, Fletch. Yeah, put them like I'd say right up against. I mean, clearly they're on this on this side. Oh no way! He You're not getting bit. Oh, oh, dude, that's insane. Did you see the line pop? Yeah, I don't know if it's just because I put it like a little bit over there. I just don't know if that just strained out a little bit. Hopefully, it wasn't a turtle clickbaiting us, dude. <laughs> yeah, it we, definitely could have been a turtle. We've had that happen before. We've had turtles just totally fool us, thinking it's a big catfish. <laughs> it's definitely a possibility. Hold on, boys. I don't know what Fletcher has going on over here. Oh, dude, there's a fish on it. Yes! Let's go, baby. Oh, let's go. Oh, I got him. He's got me all stuck in something. Oh, can we get him to come up? Can we get him to come up? It's definitely a catfish shaking his head. And he came off. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Out of all the effort that we have done to put in the live bait, to put into the cut bait, to put into everything, for the freaking catfish bait that we bought pre-packed, that smells like horse crap, to get bit first, or to get the first like initial like fish, is just beyond me. It's funny because I've been checking all the rods and I haven't even thought to check this one. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot Fletcher put this on. And this is the bait that's getting bit. That's insane. Put up a pretty good fight. He had the drag very loose. I need to remember to tighten that down, but I mean, that was a decent fish, whatever it was. I'm assuming he just had it drop all the way down here. Oh, Fletch. Taking off? Yeah, it is like crazy, bro. Oh my God, bro. You got him? No, dude. Oh. No, dude. It's like they're not having it. It's like they're just grabbing the tail and you really gotta just let them eat it. It's probably the hooks. I mean, we don't have any regular circle hooks. Dude, he took that thing all the way under the dock. At least we're getting bites. Jeez, man. My GoPro battery just died and Fletch went to go grab something. I was like, tell him, get the camera quick. Look how far he ran. He went from here all the way out there. You ready? Get him. Yo! Yes, sir, boy. Let's go. Yes, sir. Let's go. Let's go. I don't know. Look, how, look at him running. She feel good? I, I can't even tell, dude. It's definitely a cat. Yes, yeah, a little cat. Okay. Listen, we got to get started somewhere. That fish was so aggressive, bro. Yeah, he spit out the shad. I have never seen a fish just run so far 
in my life, bro. Like when you went out over there to the golf cart. Just darted. Dude, my whole line, I thought my whole spool was about to be gone. Like he was just going. <laughs> yeah. But uh, listen, not a big fish by any means, but that is a start. And Fletcher, you know, I think we could stay here, but I think we should go to the spot where back in the day, we back the in the day, we caught some monsters. What do you think about that? Yeah, I'm definitely saying we make that move. It's like just around the corner over here, guys. There's like a back corner of this marina and we have caught some lunkers. Yeah, we've caught some monsters. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy off the hook and then we're gonna move spots. Boys, this catfish choked this line so bad that sadly I just gotta cut it, but I wanna get him back in the water. I just, it was honestly the worst timing for anything and everything that happened. The big camera died. Fletcher took his GoPro off. <laughs> Fletcher was over there. The moment it starts taking my line, my GoPro overheats. <laughs> it was the worst timing for anything. Literally there's been a camera rolling nonstop for the last like four hours. The whole day, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, boys. Well, let's go ahead and move to this other spot. Someone took your bait. Well, someone might have that catfish. Oh yeah, it looks like it's out a little more. It looks like it might be stripping that line, Bubba. Uh, took it. He took it. That bait's actually working pretty well. Did you put man. The, the stinky on this? That was the stinky. Let's go ahead and grab this little shad, see how he's doing. If he's still kicking, I'll be surprised. Oh yeah. She done. She done. We're just gonna go ahead and take her right off. Dude, what did this fish do with your line? What? Oh my God. How is that? How did you, look how lively he is, bro. He's how just laughing at that, us. How, how did he even manage? I've never seen nothing like that in my that life. That is, that is something. That's one of those things that you might just need to leave and cast it back out. I'm actually gonna go ahead and walk this over here, Fletch. Okay. I guess you could just toss them in like that. I, I'm going to, man. I ain't even trying to mess with that, boys. I'm gonna cast him right out there. We're gonna go over here for the cut bait. So I'm just gonna cast him out. Just kind of let him roam, do his thing. We'll get the rest of the supplies. And the dead shad is is the move. Yeah, you wanna give that a shot? Oh, you get you get in there, boy. <laughs> These are little slimy fingers. Oh those yeah. manicured those manicured hands. Come on now. Don't be jealous I'm a hand model. <laughs> I don't even know how you manage to catch these, to be honest, but I'm not asking <laughs> questions. Hey, as long as the fish like them. Dude, that cuts like so it. easy. Boom, bada, bing. That cuts ridiculously easy, boy. Where did you put the hook on that last bait that we actually caught a fish on? Um, I'm probably gonna go right through the eyes, bro. See that? Yeah. I think that's the best way to rig it, right through the eyes. It's fire. And I'm gonna actually toss it right there on the corner slip. I've caught a lot of massive catfish there in the past. And uh, it would not surprise me if we get bit. So it's just a waiting game now, boys. I think we're just gonna drop this one right here where all our stuff is. I think just as long as it's up against the dock, should be a pretty saucy spot. Dude, I had one the whole time without not even knowing. And something even grosser is I officially got both of the fish's eyeballs on my hook and they just fell somewhere. <laughs> They just slipped right off. I guess we're gonna need another piece of cut bait. I mean, we caught that one on the tail. Might as well not let it go to waste and use this one as well. Just like that, man, pretty simple. Whatever's down there is hungry, guys. That was two bites very quick. Let's see if we can get us another one, another bite. I didn't even know he bit it that second time. All right there, money hole. Let's let that bait sink, let it do its work. I'm just gonna sit here and kind of baby it. I expect to get bit pretty quick with how fast he was biting it both those times. I mean, that was intense. Dude, he's already got it. That quick, Fletch. That quick. I mean, look at him taking my line. Whatever's down there is hungry. See him taking my line? She got it? Oh, yeah. She's going off to the right. I think I got a hook set with this hook, man. That's how you caught the first one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Oh. She didn't, she didn't get my bait, but she tore it up, bro. Look at that. I got to re-rig that. Right away. Straight up, just messed her up. Definitely the hook set got a little bit of it, but I mean, it's, it's just crazy how quick they're biting in this corner. It's a great sign. Got guts on that hook. Oh, that's money. Rig her through the body piece. That's prime. 
I'll just drop her back down there, man. Hoping these aren't baby catfishes playing with me. I'm hoping we can get just a megalodon of a catfish. I'm thinking we pop a squat right here. This looks like the ideal spot to rig up some leader. He's taking it now, guys. He's messing with it. I can see my line tightening up. Yeah, I just watched him eat it. Here we go. <laughs> I'm losing my sanity by the second. Oh, 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 hold up, hold up. Hold on. We got we got something over here, Noah. We got a runner. I got a runner too. Dude, mine is cooking. I think I'm I think I'm gonna set. Yeah, we're on. We're on. Let's go. Fish number two. Oh she, oh she got some head shake. I'm on two, Fletch. I'm on two. Come on. Come on. You're on two? Yeah, it's a, it's a baby, but I got her. <laughs> Let's go, man. Oh, what do we got? She got some weight. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got a good one, boys. We got a good one. You want to walk her all the way down and bring her up on one of these ramps? I don't know. I think I, I, think I, can, I can flip her with this. I got 20 pound on this. We're going to go ahead and do the flip, guys. And, oh, okay. All right, hold on. One more, one more attempt. Boom! Let's go! That is what I'm talking about. Dude, that's a good one, Fletch. Good job. Let's bring her over here where y'all can see her a little bit better. There she is with all her slime. Got my line fully coated. What did you <laughs> catch this one on? A headpiece? Uh, a tail. I think. A tail. I think we got this one on Dude, a Dude, that's a good one, Fletch. Yes, sir. I mean, look at the difference. That's, she got some size. That's at least six times the size of this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, boys, this ain't nothing to show compared to Fletcher's, but <laughs> second fish. There he goes. Wow, those little ones are feisty. Let's see if we can get this hook out of here for you. Pretty lady. Here, you're actually not that pretty. Kind of ugly. There we go. Got that hook out, and she's free at last. Let's check this fish out, guys. I'm gonna try to get a good grip on her. These guys can be a little bit floppy. There we go, guys. That is a really good looking cat, if you ask me. Probably about four pounds or so. We definitely know there's some bigger ones out there, but I'm stoked to get this one. Finally getting some size on the board, and I think it's time to go ahead and release this bad girl back into the water. Here you go, we're just gonna launch you. Sure. 